I'm Munib Ali. Welcome to another video on the Quran Study Channel. Last week, I did a video about the five big misconceptions about Islam held by non-Muslims as well as Muslims. And I explained how this has contributed to the racial bias and other discrimination that currently exists in the world against Muslims. To see this video, please click on the link you see above or on the link which is provided in the description below. I received many positive comments to this video, but there was one particular comment which grabbed my attention. It made me think and compelled me to do this week's video. This comment was from a Christian living in a Muslim dominated country and she described to me in her comments the sort of discrimination and bias that Christians face in that Muslim dominated country. So I set about this week doing some research into persecution faced by Christians in this world. And I found that like Muslims, they are also discriminated against in many countries. And some of these countries are ruled by Muslims. So today's video is about what the Quran says about how Muslims should behave towards non-Muslims, regardless of whether they are Christians or Jews or of any other faith. Now I also want to say before I get into this, that none of my videos are political, none of them are intended to belittle or make any negative comments about anybody. So I have avoided mentioning any countries and my only purpose is to help people understand through the Quran what sort of character our Creator wants us to develop for the betterment of this world. Okay, so let's begin. I will reference just four verses today which will make it very clear what Allah is saying about how Muslims should behave towards those who are non-Muslim. So the first verse we will look at is in chapter Al-Isra which is chapter 17 verse 70. And we are just looking at the very first part of this verse where Allah says to us وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ And we have honoured the children of Adam. And when Allah refers to the children of Adam, Allah means mankind. So we have honoured mankind. What Allah is telling us in this verse is that every single person, not just Muslims, has been created by Allah with dignity and honour, not just those who believe in Islam. So if Allah has created everybody with such dignity and honour, who are we to discriminate against those who have a different faith? We have to treat people with dignity and honour irrespective of their caste, creed and gender. This is a fundamental principle of Islam and I have referred to this in many of my previous videos as well. Let's look at the second verse now, which is the chapter called al ankabut which is chapter 29, verse number 46. To save time, I will go straight to the translation of this, which is that Allah says, and do not discuss and debate with the people who have received scripture except in a kind manner. The two words here, Ahlul Kitab, is generally understood to mean those who received a book from the Creator. And that includes Christians, Jews and Muslims. This phrase, Ahlul Kitab, is very important in Islamic jurisprudence and actually has more meaning to be understood outside of what I've just explained. But for the purpose of what we are studying today, let's just consider this to be sufficient that this means those groups of people who have received revelations, which includes Christians and Jews. So Allah is saying in this first part that discuss with them your faith with kindness. Think about the character, think about the perception of believers that Allah is looking for us to represent, which is of kindness not of rudeness, not of discriminatory behaviour 
or bias. Then Allah says, except those who commit injustices, with those we should not discuss. And then Allah actually tells us in the Quran what we should say, what is that discussion we should have, which is amazing. Allah says, and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and our God and your God is one and we submit to him. So Allah is telling us that we should discuss with non-Muslims that the way of life that has been revealed to us is the same as the way of life that was revealed to them. Now it is another matter and a regrettable matter that over time there has been an element of alterations and amendments and interpretations of revelations but the fundamental concept of the way of life has not changed. The other thing we can take from this instruction about how we should form that discussion between Muslims and those of other faiths is that Allah is telling us to seek common ground to have a conversation. This is common ground. The fact that the way of life, when Arabic, the deen, that was revealed through the Quran is the same as that which was revealed previously. So this is really important to understand when we're thinking about how Muslims should interact and behave towards non-Muslims. Now, the third verse we are looking at is in chapter called Surah Al-Baqarah, which is chapter 2, and we will look at verse 256. The very first part of this verse is La ikra fi deen. There shall be no compulsion in this deen. Deen in Arabic, in the very simplest form of translation, means the way of life. So Allah is telling us that there is no compulsion in this way of life. This way of life is not to be imposed on others. It is not to be enforced on others. Islam provides freedom of choice in people's beliefs and actions. The key principle Allah is telling us about here is one of tolerance and that other people's faiths should not impact how we deal with them. The fourth and the final verse I want us to look at today is the chapter called Surah al jathiya which is chapter 45 verse number 14. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَغْفِرُوا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ أَيَّامَ اللَّهِ لِيَجْزِيَ قَوْمًا بِمَا قَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah is saying, say to those who believe, so in this case Muslims, forgive those who do not believe. He, Allah, will recompense people for what they do. So Allah is telling believers to be forgiving if we come across individuals who do not believe and with forgiving he's telling us that we should not punish people for what they believe in so where there are muslim dominated countries where non-muslims are persecuted or discriminated against they should note that allah says you should not punish non-muslims be forgiving uh, and how clear is that when Allah says in the remaining part of this verse that rewarding or punishing people for their actions is for Allah himself, not us people. So those are the four verses. What can we take from these four verses in terms of how we apply this in our day-to-day -day lives? Because our channel is not just about studying the Quran. As you know, for those of you who follow us, and watch our videos on a weekly basis, we ponder on how the message of the Quran has to be applied by us in practice in our day-to-day -day affairs, which is what the Quran was revealed for. So there are three things we must take from these verses. Number one, we must be respectful towards non-Muslims. We should treat them with dignity and honour. Number two, we should be forgiving, we should not judge them and we should not punish people for having a different faith or a different way of life. And thirdly, we cannot compel people to follow Islam 
You see, Allah tells us in the Quran that He has made it very clear what His instructions are and what is right and what is wrong. And that now people have the freedom of choice as to whether to accept and follow that path or not. We have to give people freedom to practice their faith. My brothers and sisters, Islam teaches us tolerance. If the Muslim community and Muslim dominated countries do not act with tolerance and provide freedom to non-Muslims, how can we stand up and create a true and honest voice about the non-tolerance against Muslims in the world? My question to you is, do you feel there is an issue about the treatment of non-Muslims in some Muslim dominated countries? Do you feel people in those countries understand the principles of the Quran as I've explained them today? Please let me know in the comment section below. Let's build the strong, tolerant character that has been instructed to us by our Creator. Until next week, I'm Muneeb Ali. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum. Please click on like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe. We launch new videos about the Quran every week.